He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. Disciples, what you must go through. Luke 9, 21 and 22. He said, and he strictly charged and commanded them to tell no one, saying that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Who do you say Jesus is? Some say he was a great teacher. Some say he was a good motivational speaker. Some people claim Jesus was a radical politician. Some claim Jesus was a wise man. Many people have many ideas on who Jesus is. And what you choose to believe is the difference between heaven or hell. Jesus, he said he's the son of God. <clears throat> Jesus said he must suffer and die, and after three days be raised to life. This is why the resurrection is so important. Because only the Son of God could die and pay for our sins and rise again in three days. If Jesus had only died and never rose again, we would have no hope that our sins were paid for. Sin brought death into the world. And to conquer death is to conquer sin. I say Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Notice there's no past tense there. Not who he said. It's who he says. He's still alive. And remember, he's coming again. When Jesus was arrested and tried in a mock trial, his disciples deserted him. He was beat to the point of no recognition. He was innocent and hanged on a cross for our sins. On that cross, he felt the full punishment for our sins. His final words were, it is finished. To tell us side, it is finished. And then he died. And at this point, God's punishment for our sins was carried out. When they poked his side, water and blood flowed out together. And I like to make a point of that. I had somebody reach out to me recently and said, hey, there wasn't medical stuff like today. He was just in a catacomb. Coma. And I look at them and I said, hey, if you read the Bible, when it talks about them poking his side and water and blood flowing out together, medically, there's really only one thing that causes that. Jesus' heart exploded. Jesus was dead without a doubt. You cannot live if your heart is exploded. I love that. We were talking about doubting Thomas a little bit earlier. Sid mentioned him. And he said, you know, unless I can stick my hands in the nail holes in his side. His side is a reminder. There's without a doubt that Jesus was dead. And only God can bring somebody back from something like that. Jesus died for our sins, fulfilling all the prophecies Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22. But here, on the third day, the disciples still did not comprehend what he had told them. Let's go to John chapter 20. Start at verse 1. It says, Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb. 
And we do not know where they have laid him. How would it feel to be in Mary Magdalene's shoes? You're going down to, to prepare his body to anoint him, but to finish the burial rituals after the Sabbath day. And now you're thinking his body's been desecrated. They've taken him away. You're going to be distraught. You're going to be in a panic. She's not stopping to think about what Jesus had told them. She's in an upset man. That would be a devastating feeling. Let's read on verse 3. Peter therefore went out and the other disciple and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking, saw the linen clothes lying there and yet did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen clothes lying there and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together and placed by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must Rise again from the dead. They did not understand that Jesus must rise again. In Psalm 1610. I want to reflect on Psalm 1610 for a minute. It says, <clears throat> For you will not leave my soul in shield. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. The Hebrews believed that Sheol was a place of stillness and darkness, with, which lies after death. Sometimes Sheol is referred to as the grave. Psalm 1610 says, You will not leave my soul in Sheol. Jesus was not going to stay in the place where the dead go. Because he conquered death. It has no hold over him. Death was brought into the world by sin, and Jesus was sinless. Psalm 1610 also says, You will not allow your Holy One to see it. Or it can be translated as undergo corruption. This psalm was thought to be penned about 539 B.C. And it says God would not allow his Messiah to decay in the grave. God cannot lie. Jesus had to rise again. John refers to himself in a hum humble manner in this passage. The other disciples. I love that, because any time you read in John's writings, you'll read the other disciple, or the disciple that Jesus loved. He don't use his name at all. And when, in verse 8, it says, when he saw the empty tomb, he believed. It don't say exactly what he believed. It says he didn't know these scriptures. So maybe he was in a disbelief when they heard that Jesus wasn't there. I don't know. It's not my place to speak. Let's read on, 10 through 16. Then the disciples went away again to their homes. But Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting one at the head and the other at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, 
Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, because they have taken away my Lord. And I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, Teacher. Imagine the devastation that Mary had been feeling. As the angel spoke to her, she was so distraught that it wasn't sinking in. Think about it. You've got angels speaking to you. You're so distraught, it's not sinking into you. That, hey, wait. God's done something here. Then she turns around, she sees Jesus. And she's, she's still so distraught in that devastation. Her mind's not grasping. Hey, this is Jesus. But when Jesus said her name, her gloom turned into joy. Do you have that personal relationship with Jesus? The kind that when he calls your name, your entire life will change. You see, in John 10, 2-3, it says, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And to him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Because he rose, we have hope. Because he rose from the dead, we are freed from the chains and the bonds of sin and death. Yeah. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. There's no in-between. You either believe Jesus or you don't. He's the only way to heaven. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man may enter the Father's kingdom except by me. You can't pick and choose what you want to believe about Jesus. Because the man said he's the son of God. He said he was going to die in three days, rise again. He said he was paying for your sins. And if you can't accept that, you shouldn't be accepting the other teachings. He is who he said he is. He's the only way to heaven. He's the son of God. And if you put your belief and your trust in him, you're going to heaven. You see, John 3.36, everybody knows 16, but John 3.36 says, if you believe in the son, as Christ Jesus, you should have had everlasting life. But if you believe not the son, then God's wrath remains upon you. If you do not choose to believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again in three days, you're not going to heaven. Now, what is that? What is The Bible says the wages of sin is death. If God's wrath is already upon you, then the wages of those sins that you are rejected to accept the gift of Christ is death. What kind of death is that? It's not the kind of death that an atheist hopes for where they close their eyes and they don't exist anymore. No, it's separation from God. Yeah. It's a spiritual death. It's hell. Hell is very real. You might say, well, if God loves me so much and loves everybody, why would he send people there? God don't send people to hell. He provided a way for us, and that way is Jesus. It says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God through Christ Jesus is eternal life. But he's not going to force you to go where you don't want to be. If you don't want to be with God, if you don't want to accept Jesus, he's not going to be with you either. It's not God's will that any one of us perish. 
We have a choice here. Are you willing to accept that Jesus died on the cross and rose again in three days? If you are, if you do, you're going to heaven. Romans 10 9, it puts the easiest for me. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not based on our past. It's not based on, on what you do or what kind of family you've been born into. It, it, it's not based on what you're doing now. It's not based on works. It's based on a relationship with Christ Jesus. Believing that he paid for your sins and he's the only son of God. If you believe that, you're going to heaven. That's God's promise. If you haven't started that relationship with Jesus, I recommend you do it today. Amen. And if you want to pray with somebody about that, come up and pray with me after service. I'll talk with you. I'll pray with you. Because we're not promised our next breath. We're not promised tomorrow. The Bible says, hey, come as you are. I don't know how many people I've met that said, hey, I... I want to do this and this and this. And then they figure that they can come in at 1030. And be good till the 12th hour, right? But here's the problem. Too many people die at 10 o'clock. 1030 never happens. The deal is, you come as you are. You accept Jesus. And you allow the Holy Spirit to start changing you from the inside out. Amen. God will help you become the person he wants you to be. You just got to have a heart to stand. I'm going to close this message right here. We're going to go ahead and have some communion. And we'll be doing a baptism.